All right, guys, on the last video, we replaced the rear stock brakes with these bare brakes, and now we're about to do the front brakes, so let's get to it. So first thing we gotta do is jack up the front of the car so that way we can pull the wheels off. Make sure you guys are using chocks for the rear tires so the car doesn't roll back. We have the rear end on ours on jack stands, so we should be good to go. So next, we put the front end on jack stands, and then we pull the wheels off. And I'm telling you guys, if you guys do a lot of car work and you don't have a half-inch impact gun, I definitely recommend the Milwaukee one. So this is what the stock single piston caliper looks like and we're going to be replacing all this stuff so every great youtube video has to have an unboxing video so here's ours so we'll put these brakes in every brake kit you should get your front caliper your bracket your brake pads and your rotor as well so i feel like these unboxing videos are a waste of time just like the videos of people driving to get parts and crap let me know down in the chat do you guys think i should keep adding these unboxing videos or are they not necessary at all if you guys follow me from Instagram, you know that I make videos to get straight to the point. And of course, we have to have the money shot video, which is this shot of everything laid out. Like this was a freaking infomercial for bare brakes. But anyways, this is everything you get. Here's all the hardware, the brackets. And um, also you get bearings that go inside the rotors. They're brand new. So let's go ahead and do the install. So first thing we're gonna do is take out the caliper, which is held on by this Allen bolt up here, this Allen bolt down here. And then take off the rubber hose line for the brakes, which is held on by this bolt right here. So I had to use a pry bar to pry against the rotor and between the brake pad and the rotor. That way it pushes the piston in a little bit. That way it's easier to pull off the brake caliper itself. Next, we are gonna use a 3 8 inch Allen to take off the top bolt and the bottom bolt that hold the caliper itself to the bracket on the back. So next we're gonna take off the banjo bolt in the back for the brake line. It's a half inch socket. Actually, it, it might be 716, I didn't write the shit down. But just make sure you use a standard socket, not no metric stuff because this is an old ass car and it doesn't use any kind of metric bolts. And make sure you use a drip pan unless you want your car pissing all over your driveway. And if your car has some rust on it, go ahead and pry on the caliper a little bit and then just rip that shit off because you're not gonna use that stuff anyways. Once you pull that old ass caliper out, thank you for its service and then throw that shit in the trash. Next, we're gonna pull the old ass rotor off and if you haven't done brakes before in your old ass car, um, I'm freaking surprised. So the easy way to do it, or the only way to do it, is pull this dust cover off. These Nipix pliers are the shit. You should get some. I got them on Amazon. Um, they're freaking amazing. So you're gonna take off this cotter pin right here. You can cut it, smash it out however you want. Pull that shit out. Then you're gonna pull off your nut. And if you see me struggling with this a little bit, that's just because I'm holding the camera on one hand and then freaking try to do it with my left hand. And I'm a righty, obviously. So let's just fast forward and pretend I didn't have no issue with that cotter pin. Next, we're gonna pull off the nut. After you pull off the nut, the whole thing should come off which will spew out the bearings and the little washer that's, that's indexed in there and the rest of that crap. So go ahead and pull the rest of that off and then you should be able to pull the rotor off. So next we're gonna take off this rubber brake line right here and the easiest way to get to it is from the inside of the engine bay. So we're gonna use a line wrench to hold the left side and break the right side loose. Some people call it a flare wrench. So break it loose and then you're able to take off the left side hose. Okay, I lied to you. First you gotta pull off this little clip here. I use a flat um, gasket scraper to push against it. And then I'm gonna jam a screwdriver in between that gap and just pop that shit off. Oh shit, I forgot one more thing. It's been a while, sorry guys. Go, grab your new nose pliers and then pull this little clip up off here. And then that should allow you to separate these two hoses. The hoses are separated, but they're still hanging onto your car. So we're gonna use a half inch socket to take off this clamp that holds the hose to your frame. And then you can say bye Felicia and throw that shit in the trash. Oh, give me a second guys, hold on. Should I wear this merchandise or my new merchandise? Uh, you can wear, oh, for Thanksgiving? Please. Well, you can wear your new one. So that was my daughter that actually helped me in the car sometimes. She just helped me create that shirt for her. So if you guys want to cop that shirt, check out the website down below. And next, we're going to take off this nut and take off this bracket because we no longer need it. Our kit comes with a new bracket for our new hose. So this little bag should have everything you need to install your new bracket and then your new uh, hard line that will connect to your braided steel hose for your caliper. So we're going to install the flare adapter, then we're going to install the hard line, and then we're going to attach this metal piece that attaches to your frame that'll attach your hard line so that way it doesn't move around in the engine bay or in the wheel well. And then we're going to use this horseshoe clip that'll attach that same bracket so that way it keeps your hard line from going in and out. Now we're going to pull off these three bolts that hold your dust cover on so we can start installing the front brake kit. I don't remember the size of these bolts, either 5 eighths, 3 quarters, 11 sixteenths. You will have to hold the back nut and then take these off. And then once these three come off, your cover should come off. So somehow we had a mix up with our order where we have two of the same side brakes. So you can see this caliper is actually for the driver's side. But for some reason, we got two of them. So we should have one that's opposite of this for the passenger side. I ordered this entire bear system from ProTouringStore.com. 
And once I let them know of the issue, they contacted Bear right away. Bear sent me out the correct hardware parts and everything I needed for the passenger side. So let's go ahead and jump over to the driver's side and then knock this out real quick. All right, so here we are on the driver's side. So we're gonna tear apart this shit real quick. You guys already saw how we did on the left side. It's almost identical, left side and right side. So let's just knock it out real quick. Let me go ahead and fast forward through this. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up to about like maybe five or 10 times the speed. But that way I'm gonna let it play the whole time out so that we can see exactly how long it takes me without editing and take all this stuff apart. And um, don't, like I said, it's just like the other side. I haven't figured out how to put music yet to my videos. So you're gonna have to bear with me as I keep talking you through this, but um, hopefully it won't be too quick or too long, I mean. And if you guys are already mechanically inclined and just want the cliff notes, like real short videos, check out my Instagram because those videos on there are usually a minute to like a minute and 30 seconds long. And I just cover like all the important stuff and I edit it. I edit those videos a lot so that way I can make the minute and a half time frame. But follow me on Instagram because that's where I do most of my uh, quick posts. But for YouTube, it takes me a while to edit, edit all these videos and then do the voiceover. And then um, hopefully, hey, there you go, we got the rotor off, yay! Oh shit, I forgot we gotta take the cover off too. Those are just three bolts. Um, the top bolt actually had something like bent over it. So you gotta pry that thing flat first and then hit it with the impact and then it should come right off. So let's just wait for me to get this shit done and bring out the gun and here comes it off, yay! So the brake kit we are using, it seems to be like an entry level brake kit. And um, these are the difference in the calipers, two piston versus one. What I wasn't too impressed on was the actual rotors. These are the left side barrels are a lot bigger. But if you notice the actual material where the pad wears out, the pad on the original stuff is actually a lot wider than the pad on the bear stuff, which is kind of weird. But don't get me wrong. The bear is a huge upgrade when it comes to the stock system. All right, so let's put these brake pads onto our calipers. And all the brake pads are the same. So the first thing you want to notice is look for this little round hole right here. And we're going to make sure it's on the same side as a brake caliper bleeder screw. So once you have it orientated correctly, we're going to snap that in place. The outer pad will be the same. You're going to orientate that hole towards the side where the bleeder screw is at. And then you're going to use your extremely manly, slightly hairy hands to put that on the outside of that caliper. And it should snap in place just like the inside one. And then we're going to install these brake pad clips and they go on the opposite side of where the bleeder screw is at and there'll be one per brake pad. So I just spun the calipers around. So now we're looking at the back side and there's the clips. You can see how they're mounted. Don't mount them on the top lip like this. Make sure they're on towards the outer part of the brake pad. So now we're going to install the bracket for the caliper and we're going to install it and hook it onto the side where the bleeder screw is at. And then from there, we're going to rotate it down and we're going to push down on it. So once you get it installed, you can slide the locking pin in this section right here. But let's start from the beginning to show you how it comes all together real quick. So we're putting on this mounting caliper bracket onto the brake pads. And then once we get it hooked on there, we're going to slide this pin in through the back where the piston's at, out towards the front or to the outside of the brake caliper. And then we're going to slide this little E-clip that came with the kit and that'll lock it in place. That E-clip, you can just press it in by hand. You don't really need any special tools. And once you lock it together, this is what it's going to look like. Now, let's go install this. All right, guys. So here's a bracket installed for the driver's side. Now, I forgot to shoot video on installing this bracket. But let's go over to the passenger side again so I can show you guys how do we install this bracket. All right, guys. So this is the footage from the passenger side. But we're going to pretend, using our imagination, that this is the driver's side. Because the way we saw the bracket on the passenger side looks exactly the same way for the driver's side because we did it wrong. So... You'll have two bolt sizes lengths. The longer one will go towards the back where the steering rack or the steering uh, arm is at. And then you're gonna put the bolt, the washer, and then behind that, you're gonna add two spacers that come with the kit. And then you're gonna slide that through the A arm and then through the steering arm that's in the back. So one thing that threw me off, it says to install the, the bracket for the caliper on the opposite side of the steering arm. As you can see, our steering arms are on this side here. And then that means we would mount the caliper bracket on this side. However, our line will be too far and it will not reach the brake line. So I looked up some pictures online of 69 Camaros and it looks like the steering arm should have been on the front of the hub, but ours for some reason is behind it. So I think someone upgraded the rear steering arm uh, before uh, one of the previous owners did that. So that's what threw us off as far as the install. So again, using our imagination, pretend like we're on the driver's side. We're going to torque down those bottom two bolts to 105 foot-pounds. 
And then we're gonna install this intermediate bracket that holds the caliper to the main bracket. Now, when you look at this, you wanna make sure the long side is pointing down. And then we're gonna to torque both of these bolts to 110 foot pounds. Yeah, you heard me right, 110 foot pounds. Don't worry, it can hold it. All right, so we're still imagining we're on the driver's side. We're gonna install these uh, rotors from Bear. Now you can see it comes with new bearings in the back and the front, and they already come packed with grease. So we're gonna pull off these uh, protective dust caps. They also have the washer in it. And then we're gonna slide them on. And then we're gonna magically transform ourselves over to the driver's side and finish this install. So now you're gonna install this nut and there's no real torque space on it, but you're gonna install it, spin the rotor, um, tighten it up, spin the rotor, tighten it up till you get rid of all the play. And then you're gonna line it up to the very last hole. Um, and then you're gonna install your cotter pin. So this is more of those things that you gotta learn from experience, but you wanna make sure you get rid of as much play as you can and the rotor is still free spinning. Then you install the cotter pin, your dust cap, and now we're gonna install the brake caliper. So it's easier if you unlock your steering wheel, so that way you can rotate the um, the steering or the rotors to the right or to the left. That way it's easier to get access to the back bolts. So now we're gonna remove the dust cover from the brake hydraulic line port, and we're gonna install our steel braided brake line that came with the kit. And you're gonna use um, the banjo bolt, a washer, go through the brake hose, another washer. They're both crush washers, and then you're gonna install it to the brake caliper. Then once you get the banjo bolt hooked up to the brake caliper, you're going to install the brake line to the hard line that we installed up against um, the frame of the car. Then once you get that all installed, you want to, and you get both sides done, you want to double check to make sure that the steering, when you turn it full um, side to side, nothing's binding, nothing's hitting, nothing's rubbing. So as you can see, this is a passenger side. We finally got the parts in. We got it all installed. And we got everything on, so now we're gonna turn the steering wheel left to right and make sure nothing binds. So that's it for this video, guys. On the next video, we are gonna bleed the brakes and then we're gonna actually install the um, the rear emergency brake or parking brake. And I'll show you the parts I ordered for that. So stay tuned for that, guys. And as always, if you wanna support me, you can always buy some merch or subscribe to my Instagram, which is um, at ls underscore swap underscore sd. Thanks a lot, guys. See you on the next video.